Welcome to the class on reinforcement learning and artificial neural networks. This video focuses on the Bellman equation. So far, we have discussed reinforcement learning in a scenario where we had a one step horizon. Starting from a state S, you had one action to take and that led you to the final action, to the final state. But now let's extend this. Let's go to a multi-step horizon. And uh, so once you are now in this state S prime, you have again to choose and you choose again with a policy P of S A. And then you end up in some other state, say in this state S double prime, and you choose again. So one of the one aspect of the stochasticity of the task comes from the fact that you choose in the different states using a policy pi. And that's one aspect. And the other aspect is that once you are in once you are on this branch where you have taken action A1, then there is intrinsic stochasticity that tells you with what probability will you actually go over to this branch S prime. And then there is again your choice, which is a stochastic choice, for example, epsilon greedy, that leads you over here. Then you then you have taken action A3, and now it's the environment, the stochasticity, stochasticity of the environment that leads you over to this state as double prime. And then it's again your choice of the policy P of S double prime A three that may decide that you go over here. And then it's again the intrinsic branching ratio that decides where you go. So there's a network graph of the transitions that has two stochastic components. One is the policy, the other is the stochasticity. And you earn your rewards on the way not necessarily in the first steps, step, maybe only in the fourth steps, maybe only in the 127th step, I don't know. Now the question is, can we still formulate reinforcement learning in this context? And the central notion will be the Q value, the Q value that describes the quality of a certain action in this state as in which you are currently in. So the Q value is a value that says starting a state S with action A, which means you have decided to take this action. Then this Q value gives you the expected reward, expected reward that of all the things you can collect. Now, on this branch, you may be able to collect the first reward, that's your first time step. And then on the next branch, you may connect another reward. That's, that's this one here. And then you may connect, collect yet another reward when you decide to play this action. And now these rewards are discounted. So you want to give less weight to a reward in the far future. And that's why you take a value gamma that is smaller than one. There's another reason that you need to take gamma smaller than one. What I have drawn here so far is a graph that uh, only has a forward direction. It's a directed graph. However, there's no reason to assume this. There could also be a recurrent graph. So the state transitions could include a, a transition. If you take this action A3 down here, then you are basically going back to this state. And now imagine that on the way here, you collect a reward of one, say on this transition, then you would just continue in the loop and you would collect infinitely amounts of reward. But once you take a gamma smaller than one, then you are sure that this sum will converge. So there are two reasons for discount factor. The one is the intuitive one. You want to give less weight to far away rewards. $10 today is more important than 
11 dollars in five years that's the logic that's the first reason and then the other reason is you, many tasks have recurrent state transition graphs and it's a simple way gamma smaller than one avoids the blow up of the count and now we have to work on this a little bit and i will show you how to derive the bellman equation from this idea so we start in this state s and we decide to take a certain action a at time t so this is my state at time t and i decide to take this action here and now sort of starting in s with action a i want to calculate the total reward that i collect on the way so this is rt plus gamma rt plus one plus gamma squared rt plus two plus gamma to the power of three r t plus three so my first reward would be collected here this would be r t then i would decide to go I, I would decide to take action three using the stochastic policy i collect another reward here that's t plus one then maybe i take action a2 and i collect another reward r t plus two and these are these different rewards which i will add up and of course the sum continues and now i can just use brackets and say this is plus gamma and then i have here r t plus one plus gamma r t plus two plus gamma squared r t plus three dots but look, I went down on this graph. This was my first action. Then the environment took me to the state S prime, which was my state at time t plus one. And now I could also ask, what's the total reward I can start, I can gain starting from this state? And then this would be these remaining rewards. So this in a way is the reward up here in the first branch plus gamma. And then this is just the total reward starting in the next state as t plus one, a t plus one. So this is the total reward in a single trial. I, re I remind you that we have two stochastic components here. The first one is the policy P of S A and that occurs here, but then here you would have another policy, for example, epsilon greedy, that would be S prime A three so there is stochasticity given by the policy and then there's stochasticity given by this branching ratio p of a1 s to s prime p of a3 s prime to s double prime and so forth now this what i calculated so far is one trial in a single trial but now i need to uh, take this over to the case of expectations so now let's look at the let's look at this diagram on the right hand side to calculate the expectations so i have r tot st at that was the single trial result and now i build expectation signs around this so let's look at the expectation of this 
which is the expectation of this. And uh, then I continue and I evaluate this. So what's coming out? I have to take the expectation. I know that I start on this branch, but then I have at this point, I have this probability ratio. I have to sum over all possible states S prime that I can reach. So the expectation has a sum over S prime P A T S to S prime R A T S to S prime. That's sort of the mean reward I will get in this first step. But now I have starting from these possible states S prime, and there are many of these, I now have to average over the rest. And let's just write this average as an expectation. So this is expectation of, and then I say, this is the total reward, accumulated discounted reward, I would get starting from state S prime, where S prime is several possible states. So given S prime, starting in S prime, that's what this says. And now I evaluate further because I'm really interested in Q values, not just not the value in this state, the total reward, the total reward from that state, but really the total reward on the next branch when I've, once I've chosen my action. So let's continue. I copy this P A T S to S prime R A T S to S prime plus gamma. So I'm in this state S prime. Okay, I want to evaluate this expectation. I have to take into account this policy. So let's use the policy. I have several actions to choose from. P of A prime S prime. And then once I have chosen my action, I know I'm on a specific branch. For example, for example, this branch here and now on this branch I still have an expectation of all the rest because it will split up again but I write it just as expectation of of the total reward starting now in that branch that means S prime A prime so here I had conditioned on S prime. Now I have a conditioning on S prime and A prime. Now I'm really I'm in the branch once I've chosen my action. And now let's transform this into Q values. What is the Q value? The Q value is exactly this. The expectation of the total accumulated reward starting in S taking action A. So the Q value is associated to this branch up here, STAT. It's associated to this branch, but then this is also a Q value. It's just a Q value associated to the branch starting at state S prime. So this is Q of S prime A prime, and the rest I can copy so sum over s prime p a t s to s prime r a t s to s prime plus gamma sum over a prime p of a prime s prime and this is an equation that connects the q value in state s t with AT with the Q value in the next state. And this equation is called the Bellman equation. So here again, the Bellman equation, the Bellman equation connects a Q value up here with a Q value on the right hand side. I say up here because it's the Q value higher up in the graph. And this is the Q value just one step further down in the graph. And this Bellman equation says that if the value is high here, then it's also then it should also be fairly high over here. 
and the difference is just the rewards I can collect on this transition, on the rewards I can collect on this transition here. So the Bellman equation expresses the consistency between Q values at the state S under action A1 and the Q values at the state S prime under action A prime. Now, I call this the Q, the Bellman equation for arbitrary policy. Sometimes the Bellman equation is limited to a greedy policy, and that's what we are going to see on the next slide. So here again, you see the general case of the Bellman equation for arbitrary policy. Now, if you use a greedy policy, then you would only pick one action. This is delta, Kroninger delta. You would pick, pick action A star, which is defined as the arc max over, over the Q values. And uh, so it's always the best action, the one which has the maximum Q value. And that means that instead of a sum over the policy up here, you now have just the maximum Q, the best action. And often this is called the Bellman equation in the narrow sense, the Bellman equation for greedy policy or for best possible values. Let's finish with a quiz. So we have Bellman equation again with arbitrary policy P of S prime A prime. And now the following statements are true or not. And I want you to think about it and decide. Take your time to read over it. I pause the video and then I give the answer. And here is the answer. The Bellman equation is linear in the variables Q S prime A prime. And this is wrong. It's wrong because this policy also depends on the Q values. Depend, de, imagine epsilon greedy policy or softmax policy. This means overall the Bellman equation is nonlinear in the Q variables. The second statement, the set of variables Q S prime A prime that solve the Bellman equation is unique and does not depend on the policy. And this is also wrong because depending on what you put in here as the policy, the averaging is different and therefore the Q values are different. So to be more precise, some people write that the Q values depend on the policy, QP, QP. So these policy dependent Q values are connected by the Bellman equation, which and the weighting factor is exactly the policy.